जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जान वाला वरदारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी कोपि जान वाला गिरी वर तारे यशोरानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोरानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना थिर वन चे यमुना थिर वन चे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वाला गिरी वर तारी यशोरानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यामन तेरा वन चारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वाला गिरी वर तारे गोपी जन वाला गिरी वर तारे ओम नम भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नम भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नम भगवते वासुदेवाय appearance appearance or disappearance <laughs> of it's a disappearance day okay oh we could have sang another song but we didn't so but it's the disappearance of shri vasudev gosh so we'll read something about him he's a great devotee of lord chaitanya yeah vasudev gosh and his two brothers now what I'm, what I'm what I'm reading here from doesn't have any day critics so I'm just you know Vasudev Ghosh and his two brothers Madhav and Govinda are eternal associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Nityananda Prabhu fixed in Madhurya Ras they accepted Sri Radhika as their ultimate shelter the brothers expertly performed sweet melodious kirtans whenever they sang lord chaitanya and lord nityananda would immediately dance in ecstasy every year they came for for rath yatra in jagannath puri they led the chanting in one of the seven kirtan groups arranged by lord chaitanya vasudev gosh used his music and song to preach in bengal he wrote many bengali songs about lord goranga which are still sung by devotees in one he says if lord gora had not appeared in this age of kali then how could we tolerate living 
He has given the very essence, the very charm of life, divine love, without which it is impossible to live in this world. Without Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how could we ever know that Srimati Radharani reigns supreme in the kingdom of divine love? Having received all these things from Lord Gora, Hari, now we think life is worth living. Thank you. Thank you. In another bhajan, Vasudev Ghosh says, In your former leela as Lord Ramachandra, you became famous for constructing a floating bridge of stones across the sea to Sri Lanka. Now in this Kali, Kali Yuga, you have given us the bridge of Harinam Sankirtan, by which even the lame and blind can cross the sea of birth and death and attain the supreme spiritual happiness. He is Gunatunga Saki in Radha Madhava's Nitya Dukunja Vrajalila, his samadhis in the 64 samadhis area. Quite says that devotees are <laughs> kavi, poets. So we have here uh, Vasudev Ghosh, very um, beautifully written uh, poetry here, or glorification of Lord Chaitanya, which we'll read again. Vasudev Ghosh used his music and song to preach in Bengal. He wrote many Bengali songs about Lord Garanga, which are still sung by devotees. In one he says, If Lord Gore had not appeared in this age of Kali, then how could we tolerate living? He has given the very essence, the very charm of life, divine love, without which it is impossible to live in this world. Without Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how could we ever know that Srimati Radharani reigns supreme in the kingdom of divine love? Having received all these things from Lord Gora Hari, now we think life is worth living. Because he's saying here that how could we ever tolerate living if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't appear in Kali Yuga means it's so, um, it's, it's a time of intense suffering. Uh, Kali Yuga especially, um, mentally, most of it. Um, and if Lord Chaitanya didn't appear, how could we ever tolerate that? means because of Lord Chaitanya's appearance, we're able to uh, experience some uh, relief, but not just relief, but uh, real happiness. Can you give me the Bhagavatam soul, please? Thank you. Anyways, and then here's the next one he wrote. In your former Leela as Lord Ramachandra, you became famous for constructing a floating bridge of stones across the sea to Sri Lanka. Now in this Kali Yuga, you have given us the bridge of Harinam Sankirtan, by which even the lame and blind can cross the sea of birth and death and attain the supreme spiritual happiness. The, the bridge of Harinam. So that's a little bit about Vasudev Ghosh. Great singer. So great that each time he would sing, Lord Chaitanya Nityananda would dance. So six canto, prescribed duties of mankind, for mankind. Chapter one, the history of the life of a Jamil. Text 50. And we already chanted Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So if everybody could please repeat after me. Panchabi Kurute Sartan Pancha Vedata Panchabihi Ekas Tu Shoda Shena Trin Swayam Septa Dasho Nute Panchabi Kurite Swartan Panchaveda to Panchabihi Ekas to Sodashena Yatrin Soyam Sapta the Shoshnute Panchabi Kurite Swartan Panchaveda to Panchabihi 
Ekestu Sudashene Trin Swayam Sapta Dashoshnute Panchabe Kurite Sartan Panchabe Data Panchabe He Ekestu Sudashene Trin Swayam Sapta Dashoshnute Chat. Avijay. May I? Yes. Thank you very much. You're very kind. Pancha bi kuru tes vartan. Pancha bi kuru tes vartan. Pancha de data pancha bi. soda shena trin. Vayam sapta dasho shnute. Panchabihi, with the five working senses, voice, arms, legs, anus, and genitals. Kudate performs Swartan, his desired interest. Pancha, the five objects of the senses, sound, form, touch, aroma, and taste. Veda knows. Thus, Panchabihi, by the five senses of perception, hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, and filling. Ekaha, the one, two, but Shodash, Shodash, Shena, by these fifteen items and the mind. Trin, the three categories of experience. Happiness, distress, and a mixture of both. Swayam, he, the living entity himself. Saptadashaha, the seventeenth item. Ashnute, enjoys. Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Above the five senses of perception, the five working senses and the five objects of the senses is the mind, which is the sixteenth element. Above the mind is the seventeenth element, the soul, the living being himself, who, in co cooperation with the other sixteen, enjoys the material world alone. The living being enjoys three kinds of situations, namely, hap namely happy, distressful, and mixed. Purport. Everyone engages in work with his hands, legs, and other senses just to achieve a certain goal according to his concocted ideas. One tries to enjoy the five sense objects, namely form, sound, taste, aroma, and touch, not knowing the actual goal of life, which is to satisfy the Supreme Lord. Because of disobeying the, disobeying the Supreme Lord, one is put into material conditions, and he then tries to improve his situation in a, in a concocted way not desiring to follow the instructions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Nevertheless, the Supreme Lord is so kind that he comes himself to instruct the bewildered living entity how to act obediently and then gradually return home, back to Godhead, where he can attain an eternal, blissful life, peaceful life of bliss and knowledge. The living entity has a body, which is a very complicated combination of the material elements. 
And with this body he struggles alone, as indicated in this verse by the words Akas 2. For example, if one is struggling in the ocean, he must swim through it alone. Although, although many other men in aquatics are swimming in the ocean, he must take care of himself because no one else will help him. Therefore, this indicates that the 17th item, the soul, must work alone. Although he tries to create society, friendship, and love, no one will be able to help him but Krishna, the Supreme Lord. Therefore, his only concern should be how to satisfy Krishna. This is also what Krishna wants. Sarva dhamam pritya jamami kamsharanam bhaja. People bewildered by material conditions try to be united, but although they strive for unity among men and nations, all their attempts are futile. Everyone must struggle alone for existence with the many elements of nature. Therefore, one's only hope, as Krishna advises, is to surrender to him, for he can help one become free from the ocean of nations. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu therefore prayed, Ainanda tanu jakinkaram patitam maam bishame bhavam bhado kripaya tava pada pankaja stitaduli shudasham brachintaya. O Krishna, beloved son of Nanda Maharaj, I am your, your eternal servant. But somehow or other I have fallen into this ocean of nations, and although I am struggling very hard, there is no way I can save myself. If you kindly pick me up and fix me as one of the particles of dust at your lotus feet, that will save me. In a similar way, Bhakti Thakur sang, Anadi karma phale padi bhavarna vajale taribara na deki upaya. My dear Lord, I cannot remember when I, when I somehow or other fell into this ocean of nations, and now I can find no way to rescue myself. We should remember that everyone is responsible for his own life. If an individual becomes a pure devotee of Krishna, he is then delivered from the ocean of nations. Oh, my God, I did it in the silver and jewel shock. Chuck Shul and Mother Tommy, not to smash a good way to Maham, the come, could it about Shalom, Pangam Lunga, take him, yet keep it a Maham Monday. She could own the Tadan and Barn Chalk up the Bishta, creep us into Baby Cha. Patita, Nampa, and a Bill Vaishnavi, Bill Namanamaha, Jai, she, Krishna, Chaitan, the Prabhupada, and the she had waited to get out her. She was to go back to Rinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It's Trivita Prabhu closing that $2,000 door. That took five years to install. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, because there's so many projects there. there. It takes time to... Well, the reason I mention that, because the whole point was of that door being there, it's... Anyways, it's... You know, when you, you create temples, of course, once everything's built, once everything is designed, it's hard to change things. And especially if things have been going on a certain way for a long time, you know, to change the whole design of the temple. But technically, or yeah, you could say, you know, <laughs> in a perfect world, or not even in a perfect world, in a semi-perfect world, the, 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 the bathroom facilities are outside of the temple. They're not in the temple. Whereas these are in the temple. Anyways, it's a common American, right, standard type of thing. Uh, but so the whole idea was, was the, with the, getting that door there, so there's at least some type of separation. <laughs> And it's a door that, you know, they swing, it swings open. And then, and then we put these things there, uh, these magnet things there to keep it open, which is, which is, which is good because it might be necessary. Maybe you're, you know, coming from the kitchen and you need to bring something heavier, you know, it makes sense. But, uh, but now what's happening these days is just staying open. 
um, the the whole uh, for you know the whole morning program practically. For I guess the reason being is people find it easier just to walk through it, or if it's just you know kept open, they find it easier to go you know in and out rather than pushing the door, right? But it kind of, or you could say it it it, it def really defeats the purpose of why the door was made in the first place, because the, the door is made in the first place to keep some separation between the pujari room and the, you know, the back area and the bathroom. That's the whole reason of the door. But if it's just kept open all the time, it's defeating the purpose. Um, anyways. <laughs> so that's why I was saying can you close that $2,000 door that took five years to install <laughs> that everybody's leaving open? And aside from that, because the habit is to leave it open the whole morning program, it's, it's open at class time and then, you know, people are slamming pots around and washing pots and talking about whatever they talk about in the kitchen. <laughs> Hopefully Krishna Kata, uh, not politics. Um, but anyways, so we've got to close it for the class. But So whatever you want to do with that information, you can do whatever you want to do with it. All right, so back to the verse and purport. Uh, so Srila Prabhupada is um, he's mentioning how everyone engages in some work with his hands, legs, or her hands, legs, and other senses just to achieve a, a certain goal according to their concocted ideas. And uh, much of people's con concocted ideas are due to their, due to their association or who, 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 they're, who they're hanging out with. The worst ideas that that any that that people have ever that anyone who who, who that anyone has um, thought about and acted on a lot of the times have just ba been based on the association that they've had. Um, for example, people bring up people bring up um, people bring up Hitler as an evil person of history. Of course, there's many, 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 many other people also, but he seems to be a famous one that people pick. And uh, due to his, his association with, with others, um, they, they bought into his ideas. And they said, okay, yeah, we're going to follow this person. And following that person, they created a lot of suffering for people, death and suffering. Um, much of those people, or maybe you could say all of those people who were helping him achieve his particular goal, uh, they themselves, you, we, we could suspect or we could conclude, uh, at least a lot of them, they they wouldn't have the power to do such to do such a thing, or they they wouldn't even have an idea. Um, but you know, having having a um, leader, or, a, or or yeah, leading them in a particular way, they did so many things, right? Caused a lot of suffering and death of people. Um, and that that happens on a on a on a big level on a small level, like I remember hearing one time there were two devotees in the temple, and they weren't happy with the management surprise surprise <laughs> they weren't happy they were happy with with the management for this reason that reason, so many reasons right but at least from the story, I heard that a lot of their a lot of their complaints were irrational, um, not worth, not worth really leaving on that basis, uh, on the basis of their particular complaints. You know, a lot of the times when people are unhappy, they find things to complain about, 
and they they tend to uh what do you call um magnify the problem magnify the issue to such a large degree they say okay i i'm just i'm out of here i'm leaving they're just looking for a reason to leave that's what's happening so anyways there was one devotee and he was thinking okay i'm going to leave the temple and then, he, and then he started speaking with another devotee in the temple. And he said, you know what, that's interesting, because I was thinking about leaving too. <laughs> and he said, let's leave together. You know? And they sped off to Las Vegas. I don't know if they went to Las Vegas. It was actually in South Africa. So maybe they have some equivalent down there. But, uh, so they both left. And then sometime later they were doing whatever they're doing. They think, yeah, let's go back to the temple. And they, they both went back to the temple, luckily, right? Um, so, so we want to be in the association of people who encourage us in the right way. Encourage us to go in the right direction. Rather, some, rather than some, <laughs> the billions of strange directions we could go. Uh, and therefore, Srila Prabhupada stressed all the time, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Koi, Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi, that just by association, even, if, even for a brief moment with a sadhu or a devotee, we can attain all perfection. What to speak of if we are associating all the time. Um, but like here, we are in this particular uh, pastime of a jamil, or this, this account of a jamil, in which he became bewildered. He became infatuated with um, a particular woman, and he was already married. He was married, he was living a clean, sober, uh, God-conscious, religious life. But he became infatuated just by seeing a, um, a, a man and a woman embrace him, embrace him. The lust in his heart just became, uh, he, he couldn't control it. So, as we've heard, <laughs> I don't know, maybe 50 times right now, <laughs> everybody knows what happened. He went and he uh, found her, and actually he made her a... a like a maid servant in his house first, and then eventually he uh, ditched his wife, which in Vedic civilizations just, anyways. But uh, people don't do it. But um, he just forgot about his wife, and then he he married this as Shri Prabhupada says prostitute, and lived a very immoral life for the so many years. So. Uh, Can you close that door, please? <laughs> and come back, please. So, uh, but in this woman's in this particular woman's association, he, his, the the bad ideas, the evil ideas, the the the, the materialistic ideas that he was. Um, was acting on, they became, um, they became strengthened by her association. In other words, his, his materialistic tendencies became strengthened by, by, this, by this woman's association. So therefore, uh, the idea in devotees' lives is that if one, Hare right, Krishna, if one is to, if if a devotee is um, chooses to marry, in the past, <laughs> in the past in Iskon, there's all types of you know interesting things that happen. But one of the things uh, at a particular point, you know, some some. Son was a brahmachari, or, and as I've heard from the perspective of brahmacharis, I'm sure it happened with women also, but the person was a brahmachari, and then they just said, okay, 
So now you have to take, now you, got, now you have to make the choice. There's two choices. Not three choices, there's two choices. The leaders would tell them this. There's two choices. First choice, you get married. Second choice, you take sannyas. <laughs> what, you can't be a brahmachari anymore. Now, to jump from being a happy, simple brahmachari, right, happy, simple, doing your service, right, book distribution or deity worship or gardening or whatever it is, just, you know, simple life, to jump, like, by force, <laughs> <laughs> into a, into the household. It's just a, it's a whole other world. It's a whole other experience. It's a whole other, you know, it's, it, it's completely different. Of course, there's elements of it that are the same, namely that you're practicing Krishna consciousness, but, but much of it is different. And, what, and, what this, and from a, also become a sannyasi, it's like this is a vow, lifelong, you know, no, no marrying, right? Vowing never to marry again or to get involved in any of that ever again. So, so to, to force somebody to do that, that's, um, so that was previous. Nowadays, this, I don't think it's happening. I, I hope not. <laughs> but uh, I haven't done a survey in ISKCON, but I hope it's not happening. With sannyas, I know it's not happening, but anyways, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, but, but. In normal life, if, if one was to choose under the, under the guidance of their spiritual master that, okay, now, I need, I, now, now the person says, okay, I need to marry. So better they marry someone who is Krishna conscious. Better they marry someone who will strengthen their uh, resolve to be Krishna conscious rather than to erode it. <laughs> which is a big difference, um, or not encourage it. Uh, and this goes in all of our association, whether a person's marrying, whether the, what, 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 friends, I mean, we have friends. Better we have friends who encourage us in the right direction rather than encourage us in the wrong direction. You could have friends and they say, hey, come on over. Friday night. Oh yeah, what are you doing? We got this, what is it called? It's a, what do they call that? Funnel, like a beer funnel? They have a name for that? What is that called? Bong. Bong, B-O-N-G. Okay, that's what I thought. I've actually never experienced that, but that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> So someone would say, hey, come on over, you know, we got the beer bong out, and we're going to have a great time. Um, <laughs> it's just really... Um, and then, and, but that's just, that's just one aspect. Someone would say, well, relatively speaking, you know, there's a lot of more terrible things you could be doing, right? Which friends could encourage to do. The, the association could strengthen such uh, things. Uh, so we want friends. We want, if, if, if one is to choose whether they, they're, they're to marry, um, we want the association of people who will, who will encourage us in spiritual life. Um, and the civilization that we're living in now, it actually doesn't encourage Krishna consciousness. Just take a look at the billboards. Of course, relatively speaking, the billboards in San Diego are relatively conservative. If you look at Los Angeles, if you look at other places, I mean, certain places in the world, I've actually decided in my mind just not to look at the billboards. Like, like don't even, like, I'm driving and the billboards are there and it's just like, all right, I'm just not even going to look at them. Like, I'm not, I'm not even going to give them a chance of being somewhat pious or good or neutral, nothing. <laughs> uh, whereas San Diego's quite conservative in many ways in comparison. Um, why? Because as we heard this morning, the mind takes pictures or the consciousness takes pictures 
and then uh, stores them. So whatever we see, whatever we experience, it's like taking pictures, snap, 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 right? And it's storing them. And like you have an iPhone, right? I suspect somebody here has an iPhone, if not everyone. I think there's some Android, Androiders out there. But whether it's an Android or iPhone, the iPhone, you take pictures and, and it's able to store them, right? I think iPhone has iCloud. I don't know if, and I don't think Android has iCloud, right? Because I, but iCloud and iPhone, there's a certain amount of storage it has. You could store so many pictures, so many videos, right? And then at one particular point, they say, you want to store more? Pay us, <laughs> right? A dollar a month, which adds up. You say, oh, a dollar a month, right? Well, there's right, four billion people giving a dollar a month, you know, anyways. Uh, so, and then you could store more and more and more. Now the, now the consciousness that we, that the, that the living entity, right? Subtle body, mind, intelligence, has the ability to just store unlimited pictures, video. It just, whatever we experience, this life, so many other lives, it has the ability to store that. <laughs> it's a lot. A lot of storage up there. Now, Therefore, Srila Prabhupada, like he was mentioning this morning, he was saying, therefore we need cheto darpana marjanam. We need to cleanse the, the mind of all these pictures, right? You just <laughs> rip them up, right? Throw them away. Delete them off of the phone. Up, de delete them. Um, I guess transmission... Anyways, um, so, so, so that's the idea to cleanse. Um, and part of the, what we're cleansing is actually the conceptions that we have or the conceptions that we're acting on, the conceptions that are ruling our lives, the conceptions that are driving us in a particular direction. That's, what we're, that's one of the things we're cleansing our, our minds of. Like, for example... Um, Somebody said they, they uh, saw a billboard and it said, get rich or die trying, right? <laughs> so that's a conception. It's like, it's like advertising. Okay, this is, this is cool. This is great. You should strive for this, right? Or dharma, arta, kama, moksha. The goal of life is moksha, liberation, freedom from suffering or it's economic development, or it's sense gratification, right? Or it's just being a good person, a good religious person. Because piety, we should, we should always remember that piety means being a good person. That also could be an obstacle, and in many times is, an obstacle in spiritual life. They're so pious that they, you know, they don't do anything radical, they just, right? gratify their senses in the mode of goodness, live a good life, give some charity, but they keep a nice distance between them and Krishna. <laughs> Krishna's there, but they you know, make sure to keep a distance. Whereas, whereas, whereas to become a, a pure devotee of Krishna means there's, there, there, it's not that you're keeping dis Krishna at a distance, but Krishna's very close. Um, so that's the idea. We want to have Krishna very close to us. Uh, so the things that are being um, cleansed are the are the the desires that we have, the material desires, the different mental concoctions, the conceptions. Um, all of this is being f forgotten by the by the mercy of Krishna and by the uh, process of devotional service. So that's the idea. Okay, does anybody have any question or yes, so you could pass that mic there. All right, I had a question about in the beginning of class you said about how devotees are contemplating about leaving the ashram and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going back. But my question was 
why is it when div you know devotees do such thing? Why is it that they tend to be more materially engrossed, like they do more material things than the average person? Like they go out and they just like let loose, you know, they're just like instead of just like. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um I mean, I don't know if there's... Are you referring to people like you've heard about or that you know of? No. I heard in a class. And oh, you heard that sometimes when devotees leave, they just kind of really yeah, dive they, into the material world? Yeah, more than the average person. Yeah. I thought that was... Well, I mean, each case is different. It's not that... Of course, you know, we can't generalize that everyone does that, but... Um, but yeah, some do that. And one reason that they may do that is that, you know, they feel that, oh, well, I've practiced Krishna consciousness in the temple. I've tried hard and, you know, I, I, I wasn't really successful completely and I've been restraining myself right so let me make up let me make up for all the <laughs> all the time i've spent in devotional service and let me try to enjoy myself uh yeah but it's yeah so it's just it's it's kind of like it's kind of like for people like for example somebody's been on some super strict diet right like really strict diet that and they don't really enjoy it so much <laughs> and then at one particular point they're just like all right like that's it like i'm putting that, like forget about it you know just like bring out the if you're a devotee right bring out the grunga potato bring out this bring out this bring it all to me like right now go over on puja ki jai right <laughs> You've been on a strict diet for the last three months and then go over to puja hits and it's like, all right, I can't tolerate this anymore. And you just kind of <laughs> let loose. So that's a lot of the times somebody's, they weren't successful for different reasons, you know, to the degree they wanted to be. And maybe if they've cr created some friction with devotees, maybe there's some management and them problems. Maybe there's some conflicts, maybe their lust, anger, and greed or screaming, satisfy me, whatever it is. So they just, you know, they leave and then they, yeah. Like a person who's been fasting, they just kind of. So that happens, but it doesn't have to happen. It's not that, well, I've been practicing Krishna consciousness. It's just a matter of time, you know, everybody's going to snap, right? Like, <laughs> you could only go for so long, right? You could only go biting your you're clenching your teeth and biting your lip for so long. But if somebody practices Krishna consciousness properly under the direction of the spiritual master, they'll be very satisfied. And aside from not just you know, diving into the material world and, okay, you know, going in that direction, They'll actually feel sorry for people who do that. They'll feel sorry for people who are in that state of consciousness because they understand, because they're experiencing higher and higher states of consciousness that, that that's not where happiness lies. That's illusory. That is, um, yeah, it's not a happiness worth striving for. So they realize that, param drishtva navartite, they have a higher taste. But if a person somehow or other doesn't practice properly under the guidance of the spiritual master, then yeah, sometimes that, that may happen. So, I a quick comment, real quick. Sorry. And so, yeah. is it that one can miss the point completely in any ashram, like the Brahmacharya ashram, they're not practicing, or the Kriyasha ashram, or even like, you know, the I mean, we're meant to sannyasa ashram, yeah, like, prasta ashram. Can they miss the point? Yeah, because yeah. you just uh, understand. We're meant to both be. And my other point was, 
having this sense of great, like going through tapasya, it could be kind of a an impediment if we're like saying like, oh, I won't do this because you know it's too austere. And like, how to find a balance of like being practical but also like keeping your distance. Keeping distance, yeah. Bet between between like you know the material <laughs> nature and whatnot. Oh, like a balance. Yeah, yeah, balance. Well, everything has to be done under the direction of the spiritual master or the or the shiksha guru, diksha guru. So that's there. Um, but much of much of what people say balance is they say. Okay, well, we have to ask, is what, how I'm practicing Krishna conscious, is it balanced or is it not balanced? We have to ask. Because how are we to know? Means to be a disciple means we, we, we accept, I don't know. So I'm asking the guru, I'm asking the gurus, am I being balanced here? And they say, no, you're not being balanced. You need to be more engaged in Krishna service. You need to whatever, you need to do this, that, that, you need, to, you need to do so many things to improve yourself. Um, but this trying to find the balance ourselves, that's not so good. Because um, people have a just, a, it, 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 until we become spontaneously attracted to Krishna, then, then we have some lingering attachments to other things non-related to Krishna, which means unbalanced. Of course, someone could say, <laughs> anyways. Um, so generally, people, they, uh, they need to exert more energy than less. They're saying, I'm overworking myself. But generally, that's not the case. Generally, the case is otherwise, underworking. Um, even, even, I mean, some people, it's interesting, some people think the brahmacharya is like, what are you guys doing Like with your lives? What are you doing? Like devotees or people think, what are you guys doing all day? What are you doing with your lives? And then you have some people say, oh, you work so hard, you get up so early. You know, you need, I, it's amazing, you get up every day. You know, you know sometimes we don't do that. We're, so you have kind of t people telling you different things, right? Usually the guru is saying, push more, and other people saying, oh, you're doing so great, right? So, uh, but generally, we should try to push ourselves more than less. Like in the, like in the material world, even like nowadays, I mean, people are working very hard. I mean, like... Practically at the temple, we don't understand or have that experience in this type of lifestyle that we're having. They they hardly have like there's one Sanskrit word. It's it, I forget I forget I'm forgetting the word, but it means not even a moment to reflect. Mm. It means they're working so hard. Like this girl, she was telling me at the lounge. She was young. Anyways, three jobs she's working, three different jobs to try to stay up, you know, with the, with the race. So working very hard and this, and the, uh, much of the work that people are doing, it's, it's brutal in the sense that it's just, it just really messes with your mind and body. You know, the type of work people are doing. Like for example, staring at a screen all day, that's not normal. That's not natural, that's not normal. That's just, it's disturbing actually. Lack of exercise, lack of sunshine, lack of air, lack, you know, it's bad for your eyes, it's just... Wow. That's your phone? <laughs> wow. Or whatever it may be, there's so many things. I mean, these Am Amazon guys delivering, I think some of them like it, because like, I look at them sometimes and I go, these guys liking it? It almost seems some of them like it, but... It's, it's, in many ways, it's so brutal, you know, what they're working like that, stop, stop, get out, and just kind of delivering all these different systems that we've created in the world for convenience and so on. People are working hard, like donkeys, you could say. Um, 
So, and then they have not even a moment to reflect. It's like, because they're working so hard, and then by the time they're done working, they're tired. And then how are they supposed to reflect? And then they have to sleep longer because they're working so much harder. And, and then they get up later, and then there's no time in the morning. And so it's just like reduce, reduce, reducing the time that people have for self-reflection. And then the society likes doing that. Why do they like doing that? They like doing that because if you just really like, you know, kind of beat people down, they're easy to control. You know, they don't, they don't uh, protest. They don't you know, just give them their whatever, give them their sense gratification. And I wonder if those types of people would reflect if they had a moment. I, I would argue that they, they wouldn't. Yeah. In that position in the first place, they, they needed to fill up all their time with something so that they felt good about not reflecting or not questioning what the purpose of this life is. Yeah. I mean, Srila Prabhupada would say that much of the people are innocent, but they're being misled. So just because at this particular point they wouldn't self-reflect, which is true, because a lot of them don't have the ability to do that, to abusing their mind, by, body and minds in so many different ways, uh, Srila Prabhupada, would, he, he would blame the leaders. He would say the leaders are the ones who are not, because they're supposed to be directing people in a, in a particular direction, but they're not. So in other words, there's a culture of self-reflection, but that's not, that's not in this, that's not in this uh, society. There's no culture of self-reflection. It's a culture of immediate gratification. It's a culture of, it's a culture of entertainment above everything. Work hard like a donkey and entertain yourself, right? And, and, and die miserably. And buy a lot of stuff. So it's not a culture of self-reflection, but it's important to self-reflect because you think, okay, why am I here? What am I doing? Like, like Prabhupada would say, the grass is available everywhere, but the donkey doesn't stop to think, hey, the grass is available everywhere. Why am I working so hard, right? Anyways, it's a, but it's a complicated thing because it's, you know, we're in this society and anyways, there's a lot of complications to it. So it's not as simple as we'd like it to be. Um, I had a question. Thank you for your nice class. You mentioned the moment, a couple, the idea of a moment has come up a couple of times. And you mentioned the verse uh, about uh, Lava Matra Sarva Siddhi Hoy. Yeah. Can you explain that, how that works? One eleventh of a second association with the sadhu, how that leads to perfection? Okay. Well, they say that if you, uh, a, a, a devotee, a pure devotee, they say they could bless you in different ways. One of the ways is just by seeing you. <laughs> uh, just by glancing upon you. There's a certain uh, thing could happen, and I mean, so 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 so. In other words, just by seeing a great devotee, just by associating with a great devotee, then that could change somebody's life. I mean, someone could see someone like Prabhupada, you know, walk down the street just for a moment, and they think, like for example, there was this in in uh, San Francisco. <laughs> it was called, what was that called? No, it was the, it was the, it was a farm. Yeah, Morningstar Ranch. Some good devotees came out of there, actually. So Morningstar Ranch. It's a, it's a, it was a ranch in which clothes were optional. And it was in the '60s and '70s, so people were liking that idea. Clothes were optional, right? Of course, Prabhupada, you take the phone and. <laughs> So, Prabhupada was saying that, uh, of course, this isn't a human principle, you know, human clothes, but p people were liking that, right? Now, Srila Prabhupada went there, Morningstar Ranch. Of course, nowadays, if any, uh, any guru or sannyasi would go to uh, such a ranch, this would be all over the internet. Look at this demon sannyasi, you know. Anyways, Prabhupada went there, amazing, right? So when Prabhupada went there, he went there to give kirtan and class and stuff. <laughs> when Prabhupada went there, there was one man. 
and you know what it, what does it say? Dressed by the four directions or something like that. Anyways, he was one man and, and he was picking potatoes. He was picking potatoes. You know, they're out farming and stuff, picking potatoes. No clothes on. And then Prabhupada saw him and he asked the man and he said, What are you doing? And the man said, I'm, I'm picking potatoes, Swami. And then Prabhupada said, No, no what are you doing with your life? <laughs> and then, and then, and then, the, and then the man started thinking, yeah, what am I doing with my life? I'm just, what am I doing? Like, I need to be doing something better with my life. I need to improve myself. I need to, I need to attain God realization, right? He actually started thinking like this. And he, and he, he left the Morningstar Ranch and became a devotee. Yeah, Gaur Hari. He became a good devotee. And he was a devotee for, you know, yeah, he just passed away for many, many, many years, you know. So, um, so that's one. Just, but even just by seeing, you, you could just look at someone and you could think, well, you know, what am I, what am I doing, you know, with my. Don't say that to anybody everywhere. It, yeah. Hey, what are you doing? And then the answer just say, no. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> so, so that's so that's a way. So I hope that gives an idea. Yeah, thank you. So you mentioned that like our, our mind stores all these impressions, the samskaras, so that experiencing association with the sadhu is like a standout impression. It purifies the rest of the environment. Yes. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Dimitri. Uh, I have a question. Okay, Dimitri, and then we could ask you. Yes. Dimitri. I can wait, Prabhu. No problem. Very quickly, I just uh, remembered something from class of my Guru Maharishi. He was, uh, you were mentioning billboard, and he was um, uh, saying that in rough times in USSR in the 90s, you would, you would turn on the TV and you would see an advertisement for serial, serial killers if you want to, you know, <laughs> um, uh, how to say, uh, get rid of somebody. So you just call that number, and then the work is done for you. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's actually, it's actually true. Really? Yeah, it was on TV. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, uh, BJ. Yes, um, uh, Balaram Prabhu, thank you very much. You're very kind. Dandavat Pranams Prabhu, the quote from the purpose to the text you chose for today goes as follows quote, We should remember that everyone is responsible for his own life, end quote. So based on this quote, my question is, what is the difference between I myself being responsible for my own life and my emperor or king or the president of my country being responsible for my own life? All right. Well, it's the king's, of course we don't have any kings these days, but previously it was the king's responsibility to see that everybody was doing what they're supposed to do. And then if they weren't, then there was, he would confront them. And what to speak of, they're doing something wrong. Just like, like, like really wrong, like uh, the king in the Bhagavatam, Priksha Maharaj, when he, when he saw, when he saw is it Kali? Yeah, Kali personified. Beating a cow, he, he, he came to that uh, person who was beating the cow, and he was about to kill him, actually. Because, as Srila Prabhupada explains, the modern sa slaughterhouses, it, he, he compares it to, to the, the people who are involved in modern slaughterhouses to being punishable by law on the basis of uh, similarly how if someone was to abuse, or to speak of kill, a uh, child in private, then they're punishable by law. So he said similarly, cows, innocent, right, loving creatures, animals, they're, you know, these people in slaughterhouses are punishable by law. 
similarly to somebody who abuses a child privately. Uh, so, but the king was going to just kill him for beating this uh, cow. And of course, the king, he, he, he surrendered. He said, okay, I'm a fool. I'm sinful. Please don't kill me. And, he, and then he said, okay, you go to place. You go to places where these th four things happen, right? Illicit sex, intoxication, gambling, meeting. You go to Las Vegas. Um, you go to these places, right? And you just stay there. Now, of course, they couldn't find any place. And then, it, because the kingdom was so pious, but, and he said, okay, you go to a place where there's gold, because where there's gold, these things happen. Anyways, uh, but the king would punish people for not following. He would confront them. And if you're not doing the duties of a Brahmin, and if you're a Brahmin, you'd be confronted. You, you, you're supposed to be doing these duties, but you're not. So, so the king is, I mean, ultimately, it's the, it's the living entity who has to fly their own plane. They have to, nobody's like, for example, chanting your rounds. Nobody's going to chant your rounds for you. I'm not going to chant your rounds for you. You have to chant your own rounds. And the king may try to do this, that, so many things are the leaders in modern context, because that's, I could say, in many ways, most important modern context, how to see things in modern context. But the leaders, or the husband or wife, or whoever it may be, people who care for us, they may say, chant your rounds. And you say, no, I don't want to. <laughs> say, all right, well, what can I do? I can't chant your rounds for you. So, uh, so yeah, but there is a balance. The leaders have to, it's their responsibility to encourage and train people but when it comes down to it, the people themselves, they have, to, it's their responsibility. I can't force, I'm not going to go to your house and force you to wake up at four o'clock in the morning, right? <laughs> or even in the ashram, I mean, you know, you could only knock on the door so many times. Like we've had bhaktas here, knock, 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 right? Hey, it's four o'clock. Hey, it's 410. Hey, it's 420. Hey, it's 4.30, you know, they keep on sleep, 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 sleep till 8. And of course, eventually they move out of the temple because they're just, they can't, it doesn't, you know, oil and water don't mix. They just leave naturally, usually. So, so we can't force people, but we, we try. We try to encourage people and, yeah, train them. Uh, uh, Prabhu, if I may, are you saying that if I do not change my rounds, I will, I will suffer the consequences? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Okay. All right. Uh, so tomorrow, Govardhan will give class. Govardhan Prabhu on text 51. And then Friday is the disappearance of Srila Prabhupada. And Vaikuntha Prabhu will, will uh, he's scheduled to give class that day. So... And then we'll have a gathering in the evening on 5.36, I think. Yeah, 5.30. We'll have kirtan and a lot of... I think everyone will will be able to share something, their glorification, realization about Srila Prabhupada, and it'll be a nice feast cooked. And then on Saturday, we'll have Govardhan Puja in the evening, big festival here. So, All right. Grantaraj Shumad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.